Hi everyone, my name is Glenn Bartley and I'm a professional nature photographer from Canada. I get a lot of emails and a lot of questions about Adobe Photoshop, how to use it, about a workflow, so I thought today I would walk you through a basic workflow in Adobe Photoshop. Okay, so let's get started here with our Adobe Photoshop workflow. The first thing you'll notice is that I'm working on two monitors. I've got one monitor here and one monitor over here. On the main monitor here, I've moved the tools, which are by default over in this area, I've moved them over to this monitor. And I've also moved all of my panels over here. And I've selected just the panels that are of interest to me. And for me, those are the Navigator, History, Actions, and Layers panels. I've uh, enabled the mouse shadow, so hopefully that's going to be able to show you a little more clearly what I'm doing here. So the first step is just to simply open up our image file, which in this case is going to be a raw file. To do that, you could go up to File and click Open. I'm just going to double click on the gray, dark gray area, and that automatically opens the uh, Open dialog box. So I've got a file here on my desktop. We'll open him up. Here we see an American Avocet. Um, so this is the raw file. We want to do some as many conversions as to this image as possible. We'd rather do those to the raw file than to do those to the TIFF file that we're going to open later in Adobe Photoshop. So the first thing I want to check is is the image look level. To me it looks pretty level. I don't think I'm going to bother. If it was out of alignment we could use the level tool which is just up here. Straighten tool. But in this case I'm going to go ahead and go right on to cropping. So I'll select the crop tool and you'll notice that the crop tool can be used in a number of different ways. You can do freeform transformations or you can set an aspect ratio. And for me, I always set this to 2 to 3. It's up to you though. So I'll go ahead and draw out my 2 to 3 aspect ratio crop box and you can see then I can start pinching it in from the corners, deciding on how much or how little to crop out and ultimately how I want to compose my image. Something like that. Now one little feature that I like to do is I like to go to the hand tool or the move tool and if I click on that it automatically zooms into the crop that I just selected. So that's a nice way to see the preview of what your crop's going to be. So I'm pretty happy with that. Um, if you ever want to go back you can simply go back to the crop tool and let's just say I wanted to take in a little bit more from from the back side here I could, I could do that. And then just go back to the hand tool to zoom in. So we've got our crop next thing to do is to work through our basic set of adjustments actually we're going to take a pause there before we do that I'd like you just to check your own machine and make sure that your settings down here in this area are right now I would suggest that you dial in the space Adobe RGB 1998 depth 16 bits a channel crop size will be whatever depending on the camera you use I like to make my default 300 pixels per inch and then these two are just left at the defaults so just take a check of that. Okay, so we're ready to do our basic set of adjustments here. I'm in the basic tab over here in the uh, in the different tabs here. And the first thing we're going to do is look at our white balance. You can see here it's set right now to as shot, which for me generally I leave in the field the white balance on auto. Um, to me this looks a little bit cool, so what I'm going to do is by selecting the temperature and then using the keyboard uh, up down arrows or you could use the mouse and slide them. I like to use the keyboard often to uh, have a little bit more control. I'm just going to warm things up. I'm going to increase the number slightly until I think it looks a little bit, a little bit better. Something like that. I'm not going to adjust the tint. I very rarely adjust the tint. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to use the exposure recovery, fill light, and blacks tabs, all located right here. Um, we're going to use those in combination to get our exposure correct. The first thing we're going to do is check in with our exposure here. And by holding down the Alt key on the keyboard and left clicking on the exposure, I can see that there's one small, small area. Um, I'm not going to be able to point it out to you because I have both hands occupied here, but um, small area that's getting overexposed. If I start sliding the exposure to the right, adding exposure, you'll see the areas in the image that would, as a result of making this change, become overexposed. In this case, that would be very undesirable. But I might be willing to overexpose this image by about a third of a stop, as that results in very little blowouts. 
And the reason I'm willing to do that is because the next tool here, the recovery tool, is actually going to be able to recover those highlight areas. So I can dial in a bit of highlight recovery. Let's preview that and see how it looks. So we can see we've overall made the image quite a bit brighter and recovered the highlights. Now in this case, I actually don't like the change, so I'm going to go ahead and take the exposure back down a little bit until I think it looks a little bit better. The next thing we might want to think about doing is using the fill light tool. The fill light tool fills in the shadows. It makes the darkest areas of the image a little bit brighter. But in this case, the only really dark areas we have are these parts of his plumage here. And I don't really think they need to be brighter. Next thing we'll do is we'll check in with our black point level. So again, I'm going to hold down the Alt key, click on the blacks, and we see that we have very, very, very small image parts of his bill that are true black and nothing else. I might actually consider upping the black point. Again, selecting the blacks and using the keyboard up arrow to actually darken the blacks a little bit. The blacks also tends to add contrast because it is bringing in the black point. Something like that looks pretty good to me. I generally leave, leave brightness at 50 and contrast at 25. And I have my clarity set to 40, plus 40. It depends on the camera you use, but for my Canon 7D, 40 seems like a pretty good number. So now we're going to adjust the vibrance and saturation. These are two tools that do kind of the same thing. Um, the vibrance tends to take the colors that are already quite saturated and make them more saturated. So in this case, that would probably be working mostly on the head, maybe the water, and the saturation applies saturation evenly over all color areas. So in this case, I'm going to start with the saturation, and I'm going to bump it up just a little bit from my default value, which was 12. And let's see what the vibrance does here. Bump that up a little bit as well. So that's it. Let's take a look at our preview here. I'm going to this is the before and the after. Before and the after. Probably a little hard to see on this video, but I'm fairly happy with the change. I often go back through though and just tweak things out just to make sure everything's looking exactly as I want it to be. Might have actually made our color temperature too warm in this case, so I'm going to bring it back down a little bit. That looks better. Okay, so we're done our basic set of adjustments here. And the next thing to do is to think about, are there any particular colors in this image that I would want to selectively adjust? So for example, if I wanted to make the blue in the water more saturated, I can't do that through these tools here because they're adjusting the overall image. But what I can do is come to the HSL grayscale tab located right here, click on it, and you'll see all these different color hues. We've got hue, saturation, and luminance that we can adjust. So in this case, if I go to saturation and I select the blues and move it up to 100%, you see that they very drastically change. I may not want to go that far, certainly not actually, but I might make them a little bit more saturated. And let's preview that. Just makes the water have a little bit more color. So that's a nice change. And you could do that with the reds and all the different colors in your image. Often birds that are red or yellow will get overexposed areas uh, or areas that show little detail in the plumage and you may need to come in here and adjust the individual color channel. So for our purposes on this image we're finished for now. I'm going to go ahead and say save image and I have set a preset location that all of my images go to. Uh, talking about file management is a whole nother video so we won't go there but for our purposes today it's enough to know that we're saving this as a TIFF file and we're going to go ahead and say save. And that will conclude the raw workflow portion of uh, the processing. So I'll go ahead and say done. And now it's time to open up the TIFF file that we just created.